What's up, sweaties? That's right, it's Collider Heroes episode 155. I like to think about this show as choices. We all have choices we can make, and this show is gonna have a lot of choices. Joining me for some of these choices that we're gonna talk about, different choices, different perspectives. We've got Robert Meyer Burnett. You know, John, I think about the choices I make in my life, and my choice mainly is to be happy and to try and be healthy and enjoy what little time I have on this small You've planet. You've got a lot of time. What are you talking about? You know who's got nothing but time? It's Amy Dallin. Hello, I'm, I'm excited to be here uh, and discuss this topic, which as we discovered kind of talking over the list you made, is an incredibly squirmy one. This is gonna be the wiggliest category Ooh. boundaries uh, of any of these that we've done. So come with us on this journey. That's right, I'm ready to start wiggling right now. I'm, I'm planting in, I'm gonna be fighting uh, fighting these people off. Let's go to a watch. <laughs> I look at these two people, they're gonna have different choices than me and I'm, I'm wiggling in, I'm ready. But you know what, it's, just look at this graphic for a second. It is, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> the best and worst movies made from animated cartoon series. -na 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 -na. That's right, that's the theme song. -na 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 -na. Did you get publishing that? rights for that? I got total publishing rights owned by Collider Frosty Weintraub, just published that himself, <laughs> making about th 13 cents off of nothing. Um, check it out, best and worst. We're gonna go with honorable mentions. We've got honorable mentions, Popeye, Inspector Gadget, Masters of the Universe, Ian Flux, Josie and the Pussycats and Scooby-Doo. Those are all honorable mentions. They are not in the top three. I'm just doing top three, okay? This is from animated cartoon series and perhaps some wiggle room. We're gonna have some fun with wiggling. So guess what? Number three, we got the Flintstones. That's right, the modern story Stone Age family. With there's John Goodman hanging out. Uh, he runs, he uses his feet to power his car. A lot of crazy stuff in the cartoon that translated pretty well in this first live action adaptation. Number two, we've got Stuart Little. Now we can argue about whether it's from a book, whether it's for the, which came first, the chicken or the egg, the TV series, I don't know, but the movie was a lot of fun. Who can't look at that little computer anim animated mouse and have some fun with that? And number one, that's right, this is gonna be the one that we're gonna argue about. It's Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's right, to me, it is um, the best movie ever made from an animated cartoon series. So explain, and why, and, explain. And, There's sorry. no animated cartoon series. This and, was an original film. And why? did I pick Who Framed Roger Rabbit when Robert Meyer Burnett and Amy are completely right. This is not from an animated cartoon series. It is from a netherworld, secret, strange cyber universe where there were these Roger Rabbit cartoons that they ended up making this meta, meta story about. Mm. So I feel that even though the animated cartoon series never existed with the little baby with the cigars, like, you know, it's like they had the animated versions in this movie, this movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, is such an amazingly well done, incredible film that I had to nominate it for myself. It is the best, even though it's not based on a, a real of, series. You're kind of winning me over here. Yeah, because I just, your point I, is that this movie is not adapting a specific animated series, but it is adapting the entire texture and body of work of 20th century animation. Yes. Like, it's taking that as its palette and doing the absolute best job of introducing live action elements. Yes. It's not adapting the same animated forms into live action, but it's like drawing on that world for a live action film in a way that like you might, you might win this one. Well, the reason I, I picked it as well is because it, 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 it's a meta story where it's taking the cartoon, they introduce the cartoon right off the bat and then you see them walk off the set and create this second dimension, this third dimension with actors and these characters, like animated characters with live action characters, Bob Hoskins, it's playing a detective. It's so much fun. I don't know if you, I mean, I guarantee you everyone's seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit. If you haven't, watch it immediately after watching this. Robert, what are your thoughts? Well, you know what? This is wiggly and it's strange, but it's Watchmen-esque in what you've done. And I'm with you. I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna be like, this is what having choices really is all right about. Right on, man. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> what, are your, what are your top picks for best animated movie screen adaptation? Oh, well, I'm going to say something that's very controversial for a number <laughs> of people. My number one animated series adaptation of all time is the Wachowski Speed Racer. Whoa! Yes, <laughs> yes. And I will say this, I will say this, in terms of how they uh, translated or how they adapted the original Japanese series, you know, go mock go 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 or whatever right. it was it was called. I think it's an incredible adaptation. It's incredibly audacious. The very soul of the original source material is absolutely in every frame in the movie. Uh, visually, it's incredibly dynamic. It's it's 
it's crazy. And the, the cartoon itself was wildly divergent in tone. Like you had Racer X, you had the mammoth car, you had the race through the volcano. You know, you went all over the world. Uh, there was all kinds, there was Inspector Detector. There was all right. these different crazy weird, and how do you possibly make a movie of that? And I thought the Wachowskis did it in grand fashion. And not only that, they had Spritel and Chim Chim. Being That's Spritel true. and Chim Chim in the very Japanese way, Spritel and Chim Chim were Spritel and Chim Chim. They hid in the trunk. Right. They had a picnic basket. They were crazy you about candy. I got to I got to interrupt you for one second and just say your description of the movie to me is better than the movie, but like him talking about the movie is like, "Man, I want to see that." Wait, I've uh, seen look, it. And the I did movie, like, the movie I had you're ninjas. Saying, it had super technology, but most of all, it's a great family movie about the importance of family and about the importance of sticking together. And I, uh, look, a lo I, I am convinced the reason people don't like this, the people that don't like it, that can't handle it, is because of the palette and the tone and the approach to the material. It's so jarring that people are immediately put off. But if you stick through it, it's got a Michael Giacchino score, too. It's amazing. Well, Michael Giacchino is a, an incredible... Hey, speaking of Michael Giacchino, watch Comic Book Shopping. It's online right now, and Michael Giacchino is the guest this week on Comic Book Shopping. Super quick, weird meta plug. Look how we worked that one in, but check <laughs> it out. Robert, I did see it again recently, and I still don't like it, but it's not for because of the colors and the, the, the crazy the visual palette. You, I 100% agree with you. It is very super cartoony. I just couldn't get it. There was a superficiality to me that even though it's very much like in tone with the with the series, I never I never felt like those characters were real enough, at least for me. That's That was why I couldn't get, I just could never get into it. I tried so hard, like even the introduction of Speed Racer, I mean, I'm sorry, Racer X, who's one of my favorite characters in there. It just, I just, it just didn't hit me, but I'm so glad that well, you, you said it. You know, I always talk about, I love verisimilitude, and this movie has none. It attempts none. But yeah, it, it attempts none, so it's almost like the mirror universe verisimilitude. Mm. It's so of its own thing, and it's so audacious in that. It, it knows what it is, and it's a singular vision that I think delivers on all counts. Amy, what's yours? I love it. I well, I, I want to come on oh, yeah, speed racer a little do. bit, just because I I come down sort of in the middle, I guess. Uh, that uh, by the time I saw this movie, I had heard so many bad things that I was frankly startled to be like, wait, I I really enjoyed this, uh, and it's because it's not for me for reasons of faithfulness to the original because it doesn't remind me all that much of the original Speed Racer, uh, but because I like the things it was doing and attempting with the crazy over the top visuals, with the style and. Uh, there's, you may or may not share this reading, and it may, like, it's, it's, you know, there's a wild speculation based on not actually knowing the individuals involved, but it's very interesting that the Speed Racer movie has a plot line of people who do something that they're really, really good at, but then start to do it for the wrong reasons, um, and make something that, like, they stop being able to be proud mm. of that art form that's so good at them. And this movie coming off of the three Matrix movies? Oof which have an interesting arc to right. them, it ended up feeling, and I don't have any idea whether this was intended as a reading or as a personal statement, but it kind of works as a personal statement of sort of like, why did we get into this for the things that we are very, very good at? And did we kind of lose our way in this sort of like the many voices arguing at you to do commercial things? Like, uh, did we lose that sense of the pure joy of the art of why we're doing this? Like, it, it's a very, it's an interesting reading That's to me. a meta way I, to look uh, at Speed Racer that I never did before. That's a really, I love that. That's a really, I'm going to go back and watch it again. The only thing I didn't like about this movie was the portrayal of Snake Oiler and the car acrobatic team. They were, <laughs> they were weird satanic cultists in the TV show. You see them, they're on a mountaintop in a storm with burning flames, and Dr. Terror has a face of a skull. And right. I wanted satanic worshiping car racers. <laughs> I did not get that. Maybe That's in the, the Speed thing. Racer 2 sequel that will never happen. We can, oh, wait, wait a minute. What's your pick for okay, best? So my pick really shouldn't count either. So you know, go ahead and come out with that. But we didn't talk about it last week, uh, so we're going to pretend that it counts this week. It is Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, because, of course, the reason I say it doesn't count is that there's a very famous cartoon series for Josie and the Pussycats, but they are both based on the Archie Comics characters. So it really belongs in based on comics. Uh, but, you know, the cartoon series is very well known, mm -hmm. and obviously that iteration has had a tremendous influence on it. Uh, and it, it is interesting. Like, there are not a ton of 
like compared to books and comics, adaptations, I think, from animation into live action have had sort of a trickier track record. Right. Um, and this one works uh, not mostly because it's pulling the original spirit of the fun, frothy teen girl band thing, but because it's this crazy work of subversive satire um, that is sending up all of the tropes of late 90s, specifically teen movies, which is one reason I don't know, like, if you're a, like, a, a youth and you watch this one let me know whether it works for you because it is drawing like you don't know what trl is right. so those jokes may not land with you but if you grew up with trl the movie is is a, a beautiful like it a, an attack on shallow art making and commerce and all of this stuff uh wrapped inside a bubblegum confection commercial nonsense movie full of over-the-top performances that I love. I love that you picked that. I mean, all of my honorable mentions, Popeye, Inspector Gadget, Master of the Universe, Ian Flux, Josie and the Pussycat, Scooby-Doo, all tried different things, even though they were failures. I'm just going to say they're all failures, even though they're honorable mentions, at least to <laughs> me. But I honorable mention them because they were trying different things. Masters of the Universe, the director was trying to write the new gods. He's been on record saying I was basically just ripping off new gods and didn't use any of the Masters of the Universe stuff and just tried to make Skeletor dark side and try, I mean, literally tried to even had floating, you know, people flying around with discs and stuff. So, I mean, Ian Flux, it was a valiant effort, it's ultimately a failure, but they tried all these different things. All of these movies that we're talking about are worth checking out. Scooby-Doo was going to be rated R. James Gunn was like trying to write something for us and then they like dumbed that, it down that's a nonsense idea though why would you make an r-rated scooby-doo because it's all about scooby-doo it's, it's getting stoned so <laughs> scooby snacks baby well hey i i gotta i gotta give it up to you because josie and the pussycats i said that was gonna be my number one i, I was vacillating and when i first saw joe i thought it was so subversive i mean mm. there's a boy band singing a song called backdoor lover uh, it's and I'm like one of the funniest songs ever written. ever written, and I, it is so subversive about the record industry, about what it, where is fame coming from, and I think, and I haven't watched it in a while, but in our now social media space, I think the movies become more relevant than ever before. Yes. it has a great cast. Rachel Lee Cook is great. Rosario Dawson's great, and Tara Reid is good, and and the film Alan Cumming is great mm -hmm. as a record promoter. I mean it. It's funny because I always thought of this movie and, and, and Zoolander, the first Zoolander, first one, as sure. being a great double feature, that kind of a, a send-up of our entire shallow media culture. And this film has sort of been, it's been sort of lost, I think, to time. And it doesn't get, I mean, not like it's old crashing against the waves of ancientness. It's no gem in the holograms, no, if you know what I'm it's, saying. It's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite a great film, and I, I would be curious, if you haven't seen this movie, check it out, and please tweet me back and tell me I'm crazy. Yeah. Do, did we specify that we wanted it to be live action adaptations of animated? Yes, okay, live cool. Action. I don't know if we said that out loud. No, no, no. It's wondering live action. Aren't on this live list. action. Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah. By the way, I wanted to see the sequel, Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space. Yes. I love that cartoon. That show. was my favorite one, but they didn't do it. And Loved I, it. I agree. That, they had an that awesome be spaceship in that film. They I just found out that series. series existed a couple of years ago. And they had a weird ago. kind of like <clears throat> fluffy creature robot thing with a square head. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. They had a great rocket ship. All right, worst movies. Let's get into this. We're going to rock through this because we don't want to talk too much about the horrible movies. Dishonorable mentions. That's right, dishonorable mentions. The Smurfs. You got Fat Albert, Yogi Bear, also Ian Flux, Max Steel, also Masters of the Universe, Speed Racer. That's right, Robert. Brass, <laughs> The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. All of the Transformers series, Roka. That's right, all of them. And Rocky and Bullwinkle, the entire series, Boris and Natasha. Every single Rocky and Bullwinkle that's not the original cartoon, they ruined as live action trash. So that's just my horrible opinion. But guess what? Here's the top three worst films that I could think of. Number three, you got Gem and the Holograms. I barely made it through the first 10 minutes. I don't know if either of you guys saw more than 10 minutes of it. I couldn't do it. So I, it's probably unfair to put that on there because I didn't watch all of it, but I'm putting it on there. Screw it. Number two, The Cat in the Hat. That's right. I grew up loving Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat. This is a nightmare, tragedy, oh. weird thing of filth that should never happen. Oh, so Michael, Michael Myers is an amazing actor, wasted in this role. Number one, Avatar, The Last Airbender. The less said about this piece of garbage, the better. I love M. Night Shyamalan. I think his return. I can't wait to see Glass. I, you know, I think he's a great filmmaker. This he's just just out of his, you know, out of his mind making a bad movie. So those are my picks. What are your picks for worst live action animated film? The adaptation from animated series. Well, Amy? that's a pretty good list, I think, but I, I can't like 
they're, they are films that I've been warned away. Like, I can't stand to have my heart broken by that Airbender movie, so I still haven't watched it. Like, if, you, if you're someone out there who thought it was great, let me know. But, like, that cartoon series is one of the absolute greatest series. Like, and it, that's, it's just a heartbreaker. Why? Yeah. yeah, on all levels, it's a heartbreaker. So uh, do you have any that you want to pick? No, that, that's a pretty solid list. All right. Oh, I do. Robert, let's go. Okay, the, the most... Oh, we did rule out G.I. Joe because it was toy-based. Right, G.I. Joe's The most crushing live-action adaptation of an animated series that I've ever seen because I was so... I, can't, I almost flew to Japan to see the live-action space battleship Yamato, oh. which is an adaptation of Star Blazers, which is, of course, the original series is called Space Battleship Yamato. It's one of my favorite things in the world. The remake series from 2012 is amazing, Space Battleship Yamato 2099, or Star Blazers, whatever they called the reboot. The movie took, the live-action movie took the villains, the Gamelons, and turned them into these, like, crystalline weird insect, like, I mean, Leader Deslock, or Dessler in the original, was this giant, imposing, Grand Moff Tarkin figure, you know, military leader. And then they turned the aliens into these, like, insectoid whatever. It's so different because... You mean, like, Starship Troopers? They tried to make a Starship Kind of troopers? like that. It's just, the first, it was so cool to see the Yamato or the Argo in live action with cool Battlestar Galactica-esque effects, and I was so excited. And then the villain storyline and the original story was so totally bastardized, and I was just... I was so disappointed, and well, it was such a crushing... Why change it? Why well, change the Gamelons? I'm never going to see that, Robert. Based on your crushed feelings about it, you've, you've made that... Definitely, I'm not going to see that. I'll stick to the animated cartoon. Let us know what your best and worst live-action adaptations from animated series are. Comment. Let us know what you think your opinions are on our opinions and what your top three best and worst would be. Uh, let me thank the guests. Robert, where, where, you, where are you online? <laughs> well, you can find me on Twitter at BurnettRM. Find me on Instagram at RMBurnett. Or if you're not a Russian hot bot that's trying to like get into my shit and take care of whatever in my bank account, whatever, just tell me that you're not and find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. That's right. He's going to ping your Russian IP if you try to get at him, son. Amy Dowling, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at EnthusiAmy. That's right. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram just at John Schnepp. You've been watching episode 155 of Collider Heroes. I will see you next week. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.